Okay, so we're back with another C Sharp video, and in this video, we're actually going to do some more programming with C Sharp and actually get this to sort of work. So, so far, I believe we've covered um, objects and classes, and sort of like also um, form controls as well. As you can see, we've we've used different form controls for our uh, Windows Form application, which is pretty cool. And um, the one thing that we haven't done for this program is we haven't actually made a list for our um, items. So because we've made a class for the item itself, we're not actually storing this anywhere. So we need what we need to do is we need to right click on our little project here and then just go to add and then a new item and then just click on class. And what we're going to do is we're going to call this uh, item list. And then, as you can see, we've got a class called item list. And what we're going to do is we're going to say private um, list. And we're going to use item as the type for the list. And we're going to call this um, item list. And then equals new list item, like that. And then what we want to do is we want to say, well, actually, I think what we need to do is we don't really put this up here, we, we put this in the constructor, but I'd, I'll explain in, in a second. So if we do public item list like this, and then, so we've got our constructor for our class, which is item list. What we need to do is, um, what we can do is instead of putting this here, if we just delete this and say item list is equal to, so we're basically, we're gonna create the object in here instead. So we've declared it up here, but we've not really set it any, to anything. So I'm guessing when we start this, then once the constructor is called, then it will set it up. So it just, it just seems to make a lot more sense if we do it this way. So that that's the way I'm going to do it. And then what we'll do is we'll make, um, we'll, we'll make the public properties for our list as well. And we'll just say item. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll put our get and set in here. So get and then set. Like and items, like so. we do get and then put a lambda and then items and then we'll do set and we'll do items equals value so I've just I've just done it with lambda um, expressions here like with the arrows but you don't really you don't have to do that if you don't want to but it's just it just makes it um, a little bit more easier to work with if you do it like that okay so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make our public methods for adding for adding items to the list so if we do public add item and then we do uh, item items dot remove, and then we'll do i. So what the, basically what this is going to do is is oh no sorry we don't want we want add. So basically what this is going to do is it, whenever this method here is called, it's going to pass in the item that we want to add to the list. And as you can see here, the add the uh, the actual item that we're passing through will get added to this list here. And then if we do one for remove as well, public void remove item, and then we'll do item i. So basically these two input parameters here can have the same names because they're not really, um, they're not going to cross over with one another, they're just separate, these are separate things. So if we do items dot remove i, and then basically this, so this method here will remove the item as well. So this one will add it, and this one will remove it. Sorry if my voice sounds a bit funny. It's just because I've I've not been very well the past couple of days. I think I've got like a cold or something. It's like really bad. But um, yeah. So if I sound a bit croaky, and my voice sounds like it's dying. Then that's probably why, because I've I've not been very well. So so basically, what we've done is so far is we've made an item list, and we've got the list. And internal just means that it's internal to this class. So we declare it up here, but then we actually define it down here in the constructor. So that way the list is actually getting set up. And then whenever we want to add or remove it from the list, we just use these methods here. So it would be item list dot add item. And then we just pass in the one that we want and that should work. So basically what you want to do is you want to double click on form one so that you get the form one load. And what you want to type in is you want to type in item list. And we'll just call it all items equals new item list. And basically what this is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to loop through every single item in the list. So if we do for each item in all items dot items. Um, and we also need to declare 
uh, what the item name is, so we're going to just say it's item. And th this is basically a variable that's going to store the current item in the list for when we look for it. So for each item, item in all items.list, what we can do is we can say list box. Actually, what did we call it? We called it list output. So if you t if you type in lst output uh, dot items dot add, and then we will say item dot to string, just like so. So basically, what this is going to do is it's going to loop through the item list with all of the items, and remember the dot items refers to the to this here to this public property. So essentially what it's doing is it's going through that list in the class and it's just going to add it to the list box. So basically what we need to do is we need to say if we just move this if we move this um, object down here in fact let's let's just move everything from up there into the form one load we delete that. So what we need to say is we need to say um, all items dot add item and then we'll say item one and now when we run the program as you can see, the first item that we've that we wanted is actually in the list, which is excellent because that's what we want. We want it to display the item. So the, we want it to display the item, and it, it seems to be working. We declare it. So if we do uh, form two, and we'll just call it form two equals new form two. Okay, and then we'll just say form two. And make sure it's the lowercase one because this is the variable that we're using. Uh, dot show, and in in fact, I would just do show dialog because that makes a lot more sense. So if we just do that and then do this dot hide. So basically now, if we run the program, and we click the button, you'll see what happens. And as you just saw there, the uh, the form basically just came up. So if I do that again, click add item, it comes up, which is excellent. That's what we want. Now we've got this working. The, the next thing that I would say is to rename your forms for form 2. So this is what we're going to do. So basically go into form 2 and rename all of your your form controls to something that makes sense. So I'm just going to say num id for the first one. And then I'm going to say txt name. And then I'm going to say num price. And then we're going to say txt description. And then I'm going to say num quantity. And then finally, we'll say for the button, button add. So, and then if you right click on your form and then view code, you'll get this window. So remember, right click view code. So actually what we want to do is we want to have it so that, um, oh no, sorry, that's right. Yeah, just right click and view, view code. So what we can do is, um, if you just double, so basically now we, now that we've renamed all of the form controls, if you just double click on the add item button, and that should bring up this little event handler for the add item button. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do a try and catch to make sure that the user's um, input is correct. So if you just type in try, and then curly braces, and then catch, and then what we're going to do is we're going to test each of the different form controls to make sure that whatever the user enters is correct. So if we just say So we're gonna say convert dot two int thirty two and then we'll do num id dot value. Okay, and then we'll do convert dot two double and then we'll do num price dot value. And then what we'll do is we'll say convert dot two int thirty two and num uh, quantity dot value. So basically what we're doing here is we're basically converting whatever's in here into a, into a number. Um, so this will be this won't be an integer because it's got a decimal place, so it'll have to be a double. But these two here will be integers because you know they've got numbers in, so it's Right, okay, so we're back and right. So basically, now that we've done this, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the form two gets all of the events because we, what we want to do is we want to check to make sure that all of the IDs are not the same. So if the user enters an ID that isn't equal to the one that they've entered, then it will display an error message. So what we're going to do is, in the constructor for form two, we're going to pass in the all items. So in actual fact, we need to delete this from our form, form one load. So I've just deleted it like so, and you'll get a few error messages, but that's okay. So then underneath the public partial class, we'll paste in the all of the items, like so. And then in the form to load, we're going to say here, all items dot item, items, like so. So, so now, 
we'll have to go into form two because it'll say form two does not contain a constructor and we're going to define one so we're going to say list of items so list item and we'll just call it all items and then we'll get this error here which says inconsistent accessibility so all we need to do is um, we need to put public in front of this class here and what we need to do is we need to actually put public in front of item as well it's because public class yep so basically because we actually used a list of items in our form 2 um, by declaring this as public here the item list we also need to declare this as public because remember the item list contains items inside of it and an item has to be public otherwise it, it's not going to be able to be accessed so now we've done that what we can do is we can say um, so in our public form 2 load we can say um, all items like this and then if we go above that and say um, list item so if we go up here and say public list item all items and then what we'll do is we'll say so what we'll do is we'll say this is called list of items and then what we'll do is we'll set the public property up here all items which is equal to list of items like so so basically what this is doing is in form one it's passing the um, the actual item list into form two and then from the here in the in the constructor we're setting a public list of all items to equal to a copy of this so essentially we're making it we're making the list of items accessible by this form so that we can check the IDs to make sure that they're not the same or the names aren't similar so now we've got that we can say for each item and we'll just call this item in all items and then we'll say if item dot id is equal to and then we need to say if it's equal to this this um, form here this form control if it's equal to num id dot value So basically what we're saying is, is the ID in the list for this current item, is it the same as the as the ID the user has entered? And then if it is, we'll just say message box dot show um, ID already exists. Yeah, so basically that'll display it once because obviously the user can't have more than one ID, so that should be displayed once. So if we just quickly run that and have a look, uh, add item. And then, uh, as you can see, it says ID already exists. And if I change it, see every 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 um, ID works. But because we've made a item before in form one, and it's got an ID of one, it gets detected, and it says the ID already exists. So we know that's working, which is excellent. Okay, so so far um, the program's working. Basically, I've just gone through the code, and I've tried to make it as like as efficient, basically as efficient as possible. Um, so if we just click start I'll show you what the program does and it's really basic it's basic stuff really so if you if you start the program like this and this this code will be available on Google Drive as well so you can just download it from the description if you want and um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click add item and as you can see it comes up with like a little uh, dialog box and then simply if you just type in um, an ID of one and then you just write something for the name and description um, this should give me a message box because there's already an item in the list with an ID of one as you can see there So if I click add item It's gonna come up and say that the ID already exists which it does and that's right So basically somebody can't add an item with an ID that's the same because it it will throw an error um, also if the Say if we change the um, The name and description so that they're both blank and then we'll click add it says one or more fields are empty and that that basically uh, it stops the user from adding an item that that isn't properly filled out so it makes sure it's basically validation to make sure that the user um, enters all of the correct information so if I just say test and then just say hello YouTube for a description then I click add 
As you can see, the list box is updated with the ID and the name and also the description as well. Uh, the formatting is a bit dodgy, as you can see, it doesn't quite look right, but we can fix that easily. The whole the whole concept of, the, of this video was to make sure that the um, the list box actually outputs data, which it is, so it pretty much works. Um, still, the edit and remove item buttons don't work yet, but we can we, we can go through those later in later videos. So. Um, Basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the code for this program and if you just want to pause the video while I while um, I scroll through it so you can sort of see what's going on. I've made a few changes because as I said before I, I paused the video and I made a few updates to it. Um, one of the most important changes is I've actually deleted the reviews section so we can delete this actually. And um, as you can see the public property for reviews is gone and, um, and also uh, we don't need this I've decided to get rid of reviews because reviews aren't that important right now because they're a bit, um, it, it just kind of confuses you a little bit if, if I keep them in. So um, go ahead and delete the reviews bit, anything that says reviews and it, just delete it. And same goes for the form 1 uh, class file as well. Um, anything that's got reviews just remove it. And um, if you've done it correctly then this is what it should look like. So basically on the form 1 if you double click on the add item button Oh, it's just taking its time. There we go. You can see that it's um, it's making a new form too, and it's passing in the all items as like an object. And this is this is actually getting declared at the start of the program. So this is basically passing all of the items into form two, like the item list, so that it can detect if there's any duplicate IDs. And then in form two, what we've got is we've got um, the public constructor of form two, which is um, expecting an item list. <laughs> And then simply we're just going to store that into a public static variable called item all items class. And um, as you can see down here, we've also got a bunch of logic for the validation. And um, I've actually added this myself. So if you just want to go through this and copy it, it'll probably help you. Um, so what, I'll just talk. I'll talk you through what's going on. So basically, uh, we've got a for each loop, and this loop basically goes through each item in the list, um, for like all of the items, and just checks to see if the item ID in that for that current item if it's the same as what the users um, entered and if it is it'll say the ID already exists and it will change the um, boolean of be continue to false and basically what this variable here is it's just um, sort of validating when 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 the uh, program can actually like continue adding it to the list if that makes sense so we're using this boolean to check if the output is correct if the if it's actually like correct what the user is trying to and it is right so we're basically doing this and then we'll set it to false if there's an id that already exists but um so far as a program this seems to be seems to be working quite well um you can see that there's already an item there and remember that this item here is hard coded data so we we don't really need to have this later on when we use serialization so um so yeah we can successfully add an item id and uh, we can also increment the price so if we just do that as you can see it does add it to, it does add it to the list which is pretty cool so um yeah so stay tuned for the next video and i'll be going through some more information and covering a lot more um interesting things so yeah thanks for watching